brothers and sisters in Christ, dear friends, Archbishop Monsignor Maurice Mahotia Makumba. Today we have witnessed, as we were here together, the conferral of the pallium on the shoulders of our Archbishop. Now the investiture with the pallium is in fact a very old tradition. Already, imagine in the third century after Christ, the Pope was vested with the pallium. And it was not long thereafter that the pallium was also granted by the Pope to other bishops, especially metropolitan archbishops as a sign of distinction and closeness to the Holy Father. So today, His Grace Monsignor Maurice Mohatia Makumba has received the pallium. And we have heard how before receiving it, he had to profess the faith and to pledge allegiance to the Holy Father. Considering that the pallium is a sign of trust, of closeness to the Holy Father, it should come as no surprise that the oath of allegiance or obedience has to be pledged. What happens here today is a sign of closeness of the Holy Father, Pope Francis, to his grace, Maurice Mahatya Makumba. It is a sign of the qualities and virtues found in this bishop. With the imposition of the pallium, the Holy Father is saying to the people of Kisumu, this is my son, listen to him. And therefore, in the same way as his grace Maurice pledged allegiance to the Holy Father, we all, as we are here today, we want to pledge allegiance to the Archbishop because we know that in him the universal church is present. Through him, the Pope is present today in a special way. And it is also therefore that I am with you here today, your Apostolic Nuncio, the representative of the Holy Father in Kenya. At the beginning of the Eucharist, you have seen how the Archbishop knelt before me, renewing his profession of faith and pledging obedience to the Holy Father. So I'm not here to represent myself, no, my role here today, more than even in other occasions, is to be that representative of the Holy Father. It is Pope Francis who sends me here today on his behalf, and in his name I've put the pallium on the shoulders of the Archbishop pallium that symbolizes the closeness of the Holy Father to his grace Moris Mahatya, whom the Holy Spirit has chosen as the Archbishop of Kisumu. The Holy Spirit. That brings me to the first reading of today. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord God has anointed me, we heard. The Spirit of God is upon the Archbishop. He has been anointed with the Holy Chrism on the day of his Episcopal ordination. And today he received a confirmation of that special election in the shape of the pallium. And of course, that special election puts the Archbishop in a privileged position. The pallium, so to say, gives a special authority being so close the papal throne. Indeed, in accepting the pallium, the Archbishop has become a friend to the Holy Father. And we people, we might want to put the Archbishop because of that on a pedestal, because if we feel that this man is so important and powerful. But wait a minute. If you look to the pallium and you were able to touch it, you would feel that the material, that the wool of which it is made is very rough. In fact, there's very little elaboration on that wool. It was made of wool from first year old lambs, one year old lambs. And it was given to the Archbishop on the 29th of June, of June at, on the feast of St. Peter and Paul when, his Archbishop, when the Archbishop was in Rome. And all the pomp and circumstance of that day doesn't take away from the fact that the pallium is of a very simple material, the wool of sheep. The wool of the pallium 
may remind us of the appeal of the Holy Father to all bishops and priests to take on the smell of the sheep, to become one with the flock of Christ. And of course, in order for that to happen, the bishop needs to step down from his privileged position, from his throne. He needs to do away with privileges and perceived importance. A bishop, therefore, should not claim a VIP treatment. A bishop needs to be with his sheep, should be approachable, should not lord it over them, as Jesus would teach his disciples. The pallium of wool on the shoulders of the archbishop reminds us of Christ the Good Shepherd who takes the lost sheep on his shoulder to bring it back to the flock. And thus it shall also be with the bishop. He needs to go out and look for the lost sheep, the sheep that is lost in darkness and sin. And therefore, a bishop has to be among the people, to be with the people. He has to go where the people are, not only in church, not only at the big celebrations, but most importantly at the everyday events, the workplace, the school, at their homes, at the football game, or even at a feast or maybe even in the bar. The shepherd needs to be where the people are. Yes, my dear priest, don't drink too much then when you go. <laughs> The first and foremost calling of any bishop or priest is to be with those who seem to be the least of us. The bishop or priest is called to be with the one whom we reject, with the one whom we deny, with the one whom we consider inferior or even detest. The bishop should be with the man or woman who is despised by society, despised by the church community, who has been rejected or expelled. These are the lost sheep that Christ is looking for. Today, in the first reading, we also heard some examples of those lost sheep. The oppressed, the broken-hearted, the captives, the mourners, those who sit in sack and ashes, and those who are faint or weak in spirit. All these people should be able to find a home with the bishop. So the first calling of the Good Shepherd is not the splendid celebration. It's not about the endless sermons, the long speeches, or the boring meetings. God doesn't mention that in any way. The first responsibility of the Good Shepherd, of which the pallium is a symbol, is to be with the poor and the oppressed. It is about taking on the smell of the sheep, as Pope Francis teaches us. It's not about the powerful, but it's about the weak. It's not about the rich, but it's about the poor. It's not about the wise, but about the simple and unsophisticated. Today, before the Archbishop received the pallium, he had to renew his profession of faith. Indeed, Another role of the bishop is to confirm people in their faith. It is a task of the archbishop to guide his people on the right path of faith. We heard how St. Paul was writing to the Ephesians that we should not be, and I quote, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. It is the role of the Archbishop to guide people in the truth. But he can only do that when he himself lives by that truth and steps away from any trickery or deceit. A bishop, more than any other, should be transparent in his life and should live what he teaches. It reminds me of these words of the diaconate ordination where it says, Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. And what is true for a deacon is, of course, even more true for a bishop. We do not teach in the first place through words, 
but through our actions. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Moreover, a bishop, however powerful he might be, should be alert, as we heard in the reading of today of St. Paul to the Ephesians, should be alert to the temptation of deceitful scheming. He should abstain of getting his own advantage from the powerful position he is in. In fact, the pallium, if you were able to see it, is signed by little crosses, crosses which remind us of the wounds of Christ. The authority of a bishop is therefore always a wounded authority, an authority that therefore you have to exercise with utmost care in the way that you handle your own wounds. You do not force it. You do not pull it. You, do, you try to be careful with it in order not to hurt. Thus is the authority of the archbishop which comes from the authority of Christ crucified. Be prudent in the way you use your authority. Do not lord it over them as Jesus taught, but let your words be words of healing and not of violence or terror. The authority of a bishop, therefore, is an authority at the service of the church, at the service of the people. It never seeks its own advantage, but will always look at the fruitfulness for others. The bishop is called to identify with Christ crucified and ready, be ready to carry the cross with his master, as St. Peter wrote in that very beautiful first letter of his, for to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. Finally, as mentioned before, the pallium is woven by the many threads of wool. It reminds us once again of the words of St. Paul, of the reading of today, where he says, the body of Christ is woven and knit together by every leg ligament, promoting the body's growth in building itself up in love. The pallium then granted by Pope Francis, the supreme pontiff, the vicar of Christ, should remind the Archbishop of his duty to foster communion, to bring the body of Christ together, woven and knit together by every ligament. In the body of Christ, every ligament, every thread of wool, every contribution, every person is important and should be considered. Let me then conclude by repeating once again the words of the prayer be pronounced at the investiture with the pallium. Dear Archbishop Maurice Muhatya Makumba, may the pallium be a symbol of unity and a sign of your communion with the apostolic see, a bond of love and an incentive to courage. On the day of the coming and manifestation of our great God and Chief Shepherd Jesus Christ, may you and the entire flock entrusted to you be clothed with immortality and glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.